Hello everyone, uh, this is P. Mabu Hussain, Assistant Professor of Triple E from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. So, in this video, we are going to discuss about the types of overhead line insulators and the types of uh, towers or supports used in the transmission line system. So, it comes under the module number 2, uh, which is the mechanical design of transmission lines. Right? So, here are the first two, two topics overhead line is what are the overhead, insula overhead line insulators and then what are the different types of overhead line insulators along with that we are also going to discuss about the uh, what are the different types of supports or towers or poles so used in the transmission line system for transmitting the power from one location to the another location so by the end of this lecture uh, students will be able to know the different types of insulators used in the overhead transmission line system and then uh, you also know the uh, use of uh, different types of supports for different voltage levels. First, let us see the typical transmission line uh, system. Uh, what are the components that are there in the typical, uh, typical transmission line system? Now, if you observe uh, this figure here, uh, this is the transmission line tower, right? This transmission line tower uh, will be used for transmitting the uh, electrical power uh, at very high voltage levels. Now, if you observe the different components in this transmission line system, you are having the conductors, right? So you, you are having the conductors and then you are having the uh, support structure, which is the tower itself. Uh, then you are having the insulators, right? So insulators are connected between that uh, live conductor and uh, the cross arm of the support, right? Then uh, you have the cross arms. Uh, the cross arms are fixed to the tower and they will support the uh, transmission line uh, conductors. Right. Uh, and along with uh, these, you are also having the different uh, uh, miscellaneous items also. So, what are uh, those things? The miscellaneous, miscellaneous items in the sense, you are having uh, phase plates or danger plates also they may be there. And lightning arresters also may be used. And anti-climbing bikes, jumpers, jumpers, dampers. I get so many miscellaneous items are also there as a transmission line components. Right. So, now here if you observe the conductors as you know these conductors are uh, helpful for carrying the electrical power from uh, one location to the another location you can even uh, simply call it as from sending in to receiving in so sending in in the sense uh, it will be generally a tra power plant right from power plant to receiving in in, in, the, in the sense the substation where the electrical power will be distributed to the consumers right so then you have the supports so the supports uh, may be the poles the poles used in the uh, used uh, in transmission tire system or uh, they may be towers so poles are used for uh, up to low voltage levels and towers will be used for high voltage levels right and uh, they keep the conductors at a suitable level from the ground there must be some ground ground clearance uh, will be there uh, for the conductors and ground okay so then you have the insulators right these insulators are attached to the support and they will insulate the conductors from the ground okay so these are the different uh, types of uh, components uh, which are there in the transmission line system the main components are conductors supports insulators and cross arms right these cross arms will provide the support to the insulator these are the main types of uh, components uh, which are there in the transmission line system along with that some miscellaneous items are also there so which are the danger plates and climbing bikes uh, as I said before, dampers. Okay, so there are many others are also there, uh, which are lightning arrester, etc., etc. Okay, so this is about the transmission line system and their components. Okay, so here our main aim is to discuss about the what are the different types of insulators. Okay, so what are the different types of overhead insulators uh, which are there uh, in the transmission line system? Right, uh, as I said before, what is the purpose of insulator? The insulators are attached to the Supports, supports and they will generally insulate the conductors from the ground right uh, to provide the insulation between uh, the live conductor and supports uh, we must use the insulators right so now for uh, any material to be used as an insulator uh, the material must possess some properties so what are the different uh, properties that an, a material should have to use it as a insulator right if you observe the properties of insulator so the insulator must have the high mechanical strength 
okay it should uh, it should have the high mechanical strength to withstand the weight of the conductor okay and also it has the high electrical resistance right there should not be any leakage currents from the live conductor to your supportive structure okay uh, so as i said before the insulator will support the uh, live conductor okay so from live conductor to uh, your tower or pole there should not be any leakage current why right? because if, uh, if the leakage current is there so suppose any person touches the tower or pole so he may get shocked so because of that reason the insulators must have the high electrical resistance okay so then uh, they also have the high relative permittivity and also have the uh, good electrical strength okay so good dielectric strength they must have and they are also must be non porous non porous in the sense they should not have any impurities and they should not have they should not be having any cracks right so the impurities and cracks must be eliminated or there should not be any uh, impurities and cracks uh, should present in the insulator if there are any cracks or impurities are present the permittivity of the insulator will be lowered so when uh, permittivity of the low, uh, is lowered so then in such a case the insulator uh, will damage and it will allow the leakage current and it will also lose the the mechanical strength of the insulator okay so these are the different properties an insulator must have okay so then what are the different types of materials Uh, which are used for uh, insulators right so if you observe the materials for insulator the main uh, material uh, which we are using from uh, traditional days to nowadays is the porcelain okay so porcelain is the uh, one material which is widely used for manufacturing the insulators then uh, we have the glass and we have the steatite is another material and sometimes uh, you can even use the uh, two or more materials mixed and how we can uh, make the insulator in such a case it is called the combination of materials or composition of materials okay so these are the different types of materials which are used for the insulators so porcelain glass and steatite uh, along with that some composition of materials okay so most widely we will use the uh, this porcelain material only right how we can uh, prepare this porcelain type insulators right so this porcelain is produced by firing at high temperatures a mixture of uh, kaolin and then feldspar and then quartz these materials uh, will be mixed and then uh, they will be fired at a very high temperature so that porcelain will be formed okay now this porcelain uh, insulators are uh, mechanically very very stronger than the glass okay and also gives uh, less trouble for the leakage currents and also less affected by the changes of the temperature right so even though you can use the uh, glass as a insulator when compared to the glass this porcelain material has a high mechanical strength and also it will does not allow the leakage current and less affected by the changing uh, temperatures okay so this is about the properties and materials uh, used for the insulators so then what is the importance of insulators so why we are using the insulators in the transmission line system we already discussed but let us uh, recall again that okay so the insulators uh, mainly will protect the personal or equipment from the heat noise and electricity okay these insulators uh, may be used in any way uh, along uh, in transmission line systems or uh, along with that in other systems also may be they, uh, may be used so the main purpose of these insulators is the they will protect the person who is operating the equipment right so uh, sometimes if you want to protect the uh, personal uh, person from heat or noise or electricity so you can use the insulators okay and they will also support the overhead line conductor if the insulators are used in overhead transmission line system so then these insulators will support the conductor which is used for transmitting the power from one location to the another location right and also uh, this insulator will insulate the live pods of the equipment live pods here in the sense uh, which are having the uh, current in them okay so if you take the conductor conductor is called uh, as a live conductor so why because the current is flowing in the conductor okay so now these insulators will insulate the live pods of the equipment or conductor from the air okay so then uh, these insulators also will help to 
సేవ్ ద సిచ్ గేర్ ఎక్విప్మెంట్ ట్రాన్స్ఫార్మర్స్ అండ్ అదర్ సిస్టమ్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ యూజ్ ఇన్ ఏ సబ్ స్టేషన్ ఓకే సో టు ప్రొటెక్ట్ ఆల్ దీస్ యూ కెన్ యూజ్ ద ఇన్సులేటర్స్ రైట్ సో దిస్ ఇస్ అబౌట్ ద ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్సులేటర్స్ యూజ్ ఇన్ ఏ ట్రాన్స్మిషన్ అండ్ సిస్టమ్ రైట్ నౌ కమ్ టు ద టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ ఓవర్ హెడ్ లైన్ ఇన్సులేటర్స్ right so what are the different types of overhead line insulators are there in the transmission line system okay so there are many overhead line insulators are there so but out of all the many uh, overhead line insulators so some of the insulators are most widely used okay so we are going to discuss here the most widely used uh, insulators only okay so along with uh, this uh, you may also have the other insulators also okay so those we are not going to discuss Uh, the main insulators uh, which are using a transmission line system or we are or uh, discussing here so which are pin type insulator post type insulator suspension type insulator say strain or tension type insulator and then shackle type insulators these are the five insulators uh, which are used very uh, widely okay so which, uh, which are very, uh, used very widely in the transmission line system okay so if you observe the pin type insulator right so the pin type insulator will be looking like this in this figure so this is the pin type insulator and post type insulator is the this figure so this is the post type insulator right so this one is the pin type insulator and then uh, this insulator so this insulator is the suspension type and this insulator this insulator is a strain type or also called as tension type okay so strain type so then this insulator is a shackle type okay so these are the main types of insulators which are used in the transmission line uh, systems so apart from uh, this there are also many other insulators are also there right so but we are here we are going to discuss mainly on uh these insulators okay so pin type insulator post type insulator suspension type insulators strain type insulators and shackle type insulators okay let us see one by one so what is this insulator and what are the advantages of the, uh this insulator and disadvantages okay first let us see the pin type insulator okay so the pin type insulator is the uh, first developed insulators among the all the insulators okay and this will be used in the uh, overhead transmission line system and this uh, pin type insulator is secured to the cross arm of the pole okay so Th through the pin so if you observe the pin type insulator you are having one galvanized pin so below this okay so if you observe uh, this figure here so you have one galvanized steel pin is there right so because of this reason only uh, this insulator is called as a uh, pin type insulator okay now this pin is connected with the cross arm of the pole okay so then the conductor or uh, uh, the transmission line conductor right the transmission line conductor uh, will be placed on the groove of the this insulator right if you observe this fixer here here you have one groove so groove in the sense uh, it is it is like a small hole okay so now uh, here we are place we are placing the our conductor right and after placing uh, this uh, conductor here in the groove so it will be tightly uh, connected with the insulator so by winding some wire right so now you can see this figure here how the insulator will be used in a uh, real time system so this is the cross arm so which here is the uh, wooden pole they are using okay so this is the cross arm so then the cross arm uh, for this cross arm the insulator is fixed through the pin okay and the live conductor is placed in the groove of the conductor here okay and this uh, conductor will be tightly connected to this uh, groove uh, by using certain wires okay so if you observe here also you can observe okay so you see here certain small small uh, winding is there so which is used to tighten the uh, conductor to this insulator okay so now this pin type insulators uh, consisting of non conducting materials okay so like porcelain glass plastic polymer or wood okay these materials may be uh, used for uh, this type of 
insulators and these printed insulators uh, generally you can find in the transmission line system and uh, the tra in the transmission line system where the power of the voltage is up to 33 kV okay so if the voltage level of the uh, transmission line system is up to 33 kV in such a case we can use the pin type insulators okay if the uh, voltage level is uh, beyond 33 kV uh, this pin type insulators cannot be used so why because these spin type insulators are uneconomical so when you use uh, these in the system where the voltage level is more than 33 kV okay so remember that uh, these spin type insulators should not be used if the voltage level is more than 33 kV right so these spin type insulators are used only for uh, the voltage levels up to 33 kV okay so then so what are the advantages and what are the uh, disadvantages of this pin type of insulators so if you see the advantages of uh, this pin type insulator so this uh, pin type insulator will be having the simple construction okay so for manufacturing these uh, pin type insulators uh, the construction is very simple right so construction is uh, simple and also if you observe the cost cost also very low for this type of insulators right so cheap cost also you can say okay and the maintenance for these insulators if you observe the maintenance also cheap as well as it is very easy okay so easy maintenance will be there and uh, maintenance cost also will be minimum for these right and these pin type of insulators you can use both either vertically or horizontally you can arrange the insulators uh, either in vertically or horizontally and this uh, insulators will be used in the transmission line system so where the voltage level is up to 33 kV right up to the 30 kV uh, these insulators uh, are very rarely or very widely used okay and if you observe the mechanical strength so mechanical strength of this insulator is very high okay now if you observe the disadvantages so the disadvantage main disadvantage is that uh, this pin type of insulator will be used up to 33 kV only so it is limited to only 33 kV so beyond it it cannot be used okay and uh, 33 kV in the sense uh, these insulators uh, generally may be used in the distribution line okay so in high power transmission line uh, where the voltage level may be 132 kV 220 kV so in such system you cannot use uh, these type of insulators right and these spin type insulators requires the one spindle to arrange the insulators okay so spindle is always uh, required for arranging the insulators and the pin type of insulators can damage the insulator thread okay so so there is one insulator thread which is there so that insulator thread may be damaged because of this pin type of insulators okay so these are the disadvantages of pin type insulators next let us see the post type insulator okay so post type insulator so this post type insulator is a, a high voltage insulator which is designed to uh, which is designed uh, for using the insulator as a uh, in substations okay so if you observe the post type insulator here which is in the figure right these type of insulators uh, you can observe in the substations okay so these insulators may be used for high voltage low, high voltage levels right so in, uh, generally uh, these uh, insulators are mainly observed in the substations right so because uh, it is suitable for the different voltage levels right a different voltage levels and also uh, it may be used for the high voltage levels also okay and these insulators are uh, employed because uh, they ensure the safe and stable distribution of electricity which is generated in the power plants and the post type of insulators are made up of ceramic materials or uh, silicon rubber okay so these are the materials used for uh, manufacturing the post type insulators so ceramic material and silicon rubber and uh, these are capable of carrying the power up to 1100 kV up to 1100 kV uh, you can use the post type of insulators right so that means this type of insulator may be used either for low voltage levels as well as for high voltage levels right so so because of this flexibility uh, you can use this type of insulators uh, mainly in the distribution system uh, where uh, in general in the substations we will widely use okay and uh, this uh, post type of insulators will be placed in the vertical position 
okay as i said before pin type of uh, pin type of insulator is can be placed either in vertically or horizontally so but this post type of insulators uh, must be placed in vertical position and it is widely used to protect the transformers switch gates so switch gates in the sense uh, here the circuit breakers lighting arresters right so another connecting equipment okay so this is about the post type of insulators now if you observe the advantages and disadvantages for this post type of insulators these post type of insulators uh, are having the good chemical as well as the thermal strength so good chemical and thermal strength and the post type of insulators can be uh, readily manufactured for different uh, voltage levels as well as uh, for the de de defined mechanical load strengths okay so which is for 100 uh, kilovolts also okay you can even manufacture these post type of insulators up to hundreds of kilovolts right and this uh, post type of insulator uh, weight is very low so that means it is having a light weight and the risk uh, will be also very low here okay so uh, low risk of damage is there and it is having the light weight okay these are the advantages of post type of insulators and if you observe the disadvantages right the disadvantage of post of insulators is that so due to the light weight uh, which is which it is having so it provides the less load on the supporting structure okay it cannot uh, maintain the uh, high amount of load right so you have to uh, place only the less load on the uh, insulator okay so then if you observe the initial cost so initial cost uh, will be cheap so but long utility of the insulator is uh, really very low okay so you can you can have the low cost which is the cheap so which can be the advantage but if you observe the long utility right how many days uh, this insulators are used right so the long utility of this particular insulator is a very low so this is the disadvantage of this post type of insulators then so what are the differences between the pin type insulators and post type post type insulator if you observe the table here you can have the Uh, sim, uh some differences which are between uh, pin type insulators and post type insulators so now if you observe the first point here the pin type of insulators are used up to 33 kv right so generally uh, the pin type of insulators are used only up to the 33 kv so but if you observe the post type of insulators these post type of insulators are suitable for low voltage as well as for high voltage levels also right so this post type of insulators may be used up to the 1100 kv also for high voltage also you can use and if you want if you want to use it for low voltage then also uh, this post type of insulators can be used right and uh, the pin, uh, pin type of insulator if you observe it is having only one single stag right so one single stag will be there uh, here in the post pin type so but if you observe the post type of insulators it is having the multiple stags as well as single stag okay so then if you observe the conductors which are fixed on the top of the insulator by binding so in case of pin type insulator so but in case of post type of insulator the conductor is fixed on the top of the insulator with the help of the one connecting connector clamp okay so in in pin type of insulators the conductor is also placed on the top of the insulator and it will be through the binding process so but in case of post type of insulator the conductor uh, is placed on the top of the insulator only so but with the help of one connector clamp okay so in pin type of insulators two insulators cannot be uh, fixed root together for higher voltage applications if you want to use the uh, insulators for high voltage applications then pin type of insulators uh, cannot be uh, uh, cannot be added together okay two insulators cannot be added together and you cannot use them Uh, for higher voltages but in case of post type of the post type of insulator two or more insulators can be fixed together uh, so that uh, it can be used for a higher higher voltage applications okay and in case of pin type of insulator metallic mixing arrangement is provided so only on the bottom end of the insulator right so metallic uh, fixing arrangement this metallic fixing arrangement is provided on the bottom of the insulators only so but in case of post type of insulator this metallic uh, fixing arrangement will be provided so both on the top as well as bottom end of the insulators so these are the main differences between pin type of insulators and 
host type of insulators so then so coming to the uh, next type of insulator uh, which is the suspension type okay so the suspension type of insulator right so if you observe the suspension type of insulator so it may be looking like uh, this in the figure okay so this is the suspension type of insulator right this suspension type of insulators will be having the number of porcelain discs right so if you see here this is one disc this is another disc this is another disc this is another disc like that so many number of discs are connected in series to form a one suspension type insulator here okay so so if you observe the figure here there are many number of discs are connected together uh, in series uh, which forms the one string of insulators okay so this insulator now it is called the suspension type of insulator right so this type of uh, composite unit is also called as the string type insulator okay sometimes in suspension type insulator you can also call it as string type insulator okay and this uh, in this uh, suspension type of insulator the conductor is suspended at the bottom end of the string so right so if you observe the here the figure here so the conductors are fixed at the bottom so at the bottom end of the string right so while the other end of the string is attached to the cross arm of the supporting structure right so this is the cross arm so for this cross arm uh, the other end is connected okay and this uh, uh, disc disc voltage level if you observe right as i said before so here in this uh, suspension type of insulator or string type of insulator number of discs are connected in series right now each disc is having a voltage level up to 11 kV okay so if you want to use the uh, suspension type of insulator for a 33 kV system in such a case three insulators may be connected in series right if you or if you or if you want the uh, if you want to use the suspension type of insulator uh, for a 33 kV uh, transmission line system then you have to use three discs right each disc is having 11 kV voltage level right so those three discs are connected in series with some metallic link like this okay and here the live conductor is connected now this is a string of insulators where three insulators are connected and each uh, insulator uh, disc is uh, maintained for a voltage level of 11 kV okay the total uh, string of insulator will support up to 33 kV like this you can add number of discs in series uh, so that uh, the voltage level of the system may be increased now what are the advantages and disadvantages of this suspension type of insulator right so this suspension type of insulators are more economical when compared to the pin type of insulators for high voltage transmission line systems okay so pin type of insulators are used for low voltage so on that to up to 33 kV only so but uh, if you observe the suspension type of insulator in suspension type of insulators uh, number of discs are connected in series uh, each disc is having 11 kV and if you want to use for 132 kV also you can connect 11 or uh, 13 this uh, in series okay 33 in 4 if you see 132 kV. So if you if oh, four insulators are connected, okay. So if four uh, four are not twelve, sorry. So twelve insulator if they are connected in uh, series. So in such a case, you may get the 132 voltage level, right? So high for higher voltage transmission line system, suspension type of insulators are more economical when compared to the pin type of insulator, right? So and as I said before. each insulator disc which is uh, used in the suspension type of insulator is designed to operate for 11 kv okay so hence uh, for any operating voltage uh, you can design the uh, string of insulators right so if you want uh, for such 66 kv six number of discs are connected in series like that for any uh, voltage levels you can use the suspension type of insulator now another advantage is that suppose if there is any failure in one unit of the string right if there is any failure in the one unit of the string so in such a case only that unit 
So you need here in the sense uh, that disk. Okay, so that disk may be replaced. Okay, so because uh, uh, because the other disk uh, may be working condition. Okay, so if there is any damage is there, so that damage may be happen for may be happen for only one disk. So if you replace that disk again, that suspension type of insulator will work for the same voltage level. Right, so the maintenance uh, will be easy and maintenance cost all cost also will be minimized here. Okay, then. If you observe the disadvantages, so disadvantages of uh, this suspension type of insulators. So the suspension type of insulator, if you observe, the cost is very high initially. So uh, when compared to the pin type of insulators as well as post type of insulators, right? And it also requires the more height for the supporting structure than the pin type of insulators and post type of insulators to maintain the sufficient ground clearance. Okay, so these string type of insulators are connected in series like this, right? Now under uh, this uh, uh, end, uh, one end, which is the lower end, we can connect the conductor, right? So because of that reason only, uh, the supporting structure, the supporting structure for this uh, insulator at the other end uh, will be at a very high, very high distance, right? So so that the sufficient clearance will be maintained between the ground. And your live conductor. Okay. So then, other another type of uh, insulator is the strain type or suspension type of insulator. Right. This is strain type and suspension uh, tension type. Sorry. So strain type or tension type of insulator. It is almost similar to the suspension type of insulator. In here also, you are having the number of discs which are connected in series. Right. So, but uh, uh, the difference is that. The specifications and working of the insulator, right? So, it, of course, it is having the same uh, same type as that of the suspension type. Uh, but specifications working, if you observe, it will be uh, somewhat different, right? The post type of insulator, uh, sorry, strain type of insulator will be having like this, or here also you can see, right? Here, two G's, two discs are connected in series. Right, the suspension type of insulators. If you observe, these suspension type of insulators are placed vertically here, but strain type of insulators will be placed horizontally. So that is the only difference here. Okay, and if you observe the mechanical strength, so the mechanical strength uh, between the suspension type and strain type, the mechanical strength will be very more in case of uh, this strain type of insulators when compared to the suspension type of insulators okay and these insulators are designed to operate under more mechanical stresses right and these insulator will withstand the stress of a suspended uh, conductor or wire okay and these uh, uh, strain type or tension type of insulators will be mainly used at the river crossings if there are river crossing or if there are uh, at the corners and at sharp curves and at the dead ends Okay, so these insulators are used. Okay, so the strain type or tension type insulators are mainly used at a river crossings, corners, sharp curves, and dead ends. Okay, and for volt uh, low voltage lines which are having less than 11 kV, instead of using a strain type insulator, so generally they may use the shackle type of insulator. Right, that shackle type of insulator we will discuss in the next slide. Okay. So now here we are comparing the strain type of insulator with the suspension type of insulator. Okay. So the main difference is that uh, the strain type of insulators uh, will be designed to operate at the very mechanic, uh, very high mechanical stress. Right. They have to withstand the uh, withstand the uh, conductor with the uh, uh, the conductor or cable with a high uh, high mechanical strength. Okay. So now, if you observe the 33 kV uh, rated uh, system, the number of discs used in the suspension type, if you see, there will be three in disc, uh, disc, discs are connected in series for 33 kV system. In case of strain type also, only three are connected. But if you observe the 66 kV, so for 66 kV system, you have to use five uh, discs which are connected in series in case of strain type of insulator. So, but in case of suspension, you can use only four. Okay. 
and in case of 132 kV system, nine insulators, nine insulator discs are connected in series in case of strain type, and in case of suspension type, only eight insulators are connected in series. And for 220 kV system, fifteen uh, insulators are connected uh, in series to to form a strain type of insulator, but for suspension type, only fourteen is enough. Okay, so this is the main difference. Why? Uh, we are using more number of discs which are connected uh, in the strain type of insulators to get the more mechanical strength as well as uh, uh, they will be capable of withstanding for high uh, weight of the cable. Okay, so this is about the uh, st strain type or tension type of insulator. Now, if you observe the advantages and disadvantages of uh, this strain type of insulators, so these strain type of insulators are designed from the piece of glass. Porcelain or fiberglass. Okay, so the materials used for the uh, these uh, strain type of insulators is glass, porcelain, and fiberglass. And if the insulator is damaged, so then stay wire will not fall on the problem here. Okay, the stay wire uh, which is in the transmission line system, right? So will not fall on the ground uh, even if the insulator is damaged. Okay. And these uh, strain type of insulators are insulated from the ground for low voltage lines. So they will be insulated from the ground uh, for the low voltage lines. And disadvantage of uh, this uh, strain type of insulators is that the steel of this insulator is expensive as compared to the post type and pin type of insulator. As already uh, discussed in suspension type also, the total strain will be very costly when compared to the pin type as well as post type. And uh, this Strain type of insulators needs the more height for the supporting structure. Okay, so both for suspension type and the um, strain type, uh, the disadvantages are all disadvantages are always similar. Okay, so then the last type uh, here is the saddle type of insulator. Right, this saddle type of insulators are used in the olden days, uh, in early days. Okay, in early days, the saddle type of insulators were used as a strain insulators. And these uh, insulators are used for very very low voltage levels only up to 66 kV, right? Now, in present days, uh, they are frequently used for low voltage distribution lines. Okay. Now, these saddle type of insulators may be placed either in horizontal position or in vertical position. Okay. So the fixing of uh, this uh, saddle type insulator to the pole here is shown in the figure one here. Okay, so this will be fixed to the pole through one bolt. Okay, so this is the saddle type of insulator. Here, uh, here you can connect the connector. So here in this place, you will connect the connector. Now with this fixing arrangement, with this bolt, you can connect the this saddle type insulator either in horizontal position or in vertical position. Okay, so this saddle type insulator is directly fixed to the pole with the bolt. Or to the cross arm of the support. Then, if you observe the disadvantages and advantages of this pole uh, saddle type of insulator, these saddle type of insulators are designed to meet up the demands of the electricity, and they are also used for uh, maintaining the protection in different electrical appliances. And it also bears the high amount of current and temperature. And the disadvantages are the it will be used for low voltage distribution network only for high voltage. You cannot use this type of insulators. Okay, so with this uh, overhead line insulators are completed. Now, if you observe the overhead line supports. Supports here in the sense uh, the supports may be either poles. So for up to uh, low voltage levels, so the the supports also called as a poles. And if you use for high high voltage, the high voltage will be uh, with towers. So you have the overhead line supports, uh, which are either poles or towers, right? So what is the purpose of these line supports? Because sometimes uh, these line supports you can also call it as a supporting structures, okay? And the supporting structures are used for uh, using the overhead transmission line system for uh, supporting the line uh, line conductors, okay? So these support the uh, line conductors, and uh, there are various types of poles are there, and various types of uh, towers are there. Uh, what are the various types of towers and various types of poles which are used in the transmission line system? We will discuss here. 
okay so in general if you observe the line supports these line supports are poles or towers so they have some properties so the properties of uh, the line supports if you observe so the supports must have the high mechanical strength right when you when they have the high mechanical strength they can withstand the weight of the conductors and other also the wind loads if, if the force of the wind is very high so then uh, there should not be any damage to the uh, these supporting structures okay so for that purpose this uh, line supports must have the high mechanical strength to withstand for uh, both weight of the conductor as well as the uh, wind loads okay and this supports must be having light weight right so they uh, so that they it is very easy for carrying from one place to the other place right so even though they are having the light weight so there should not be any compromise with the mechanical strength okay so without loss of uh, any mechanical strength the weight of the car supporting structure may, must be low okay and this line supports must have the cheap in cost and economical to maintain okay and long uh, they must have the longer life and easy accessibility of the conductors for maintenance so these are the certain properties which an overhead uh, line uh, supports must possess okay so what are the different line supports we are using in the transmission line system we will discuss one by one okay so the line supports may be either poles or towers poles are generally used for uh, low voltages and towers will be used for high voltages first we will discuss about the uh, poles then we will go with the towers so first there are again uh, different types of uh, poles are there the first one is the wooden poles okay so in olden days we are using the uh, these wooden poles right and these wooden 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 poles will be used for uh, shorter spans a span so what is the span here so the span is nothing but the distance between any two poles okay so we are having the two poles the distance between these two poles is called the span or span length also you can say okay and this wooden poles will be generally used for uh, shorter spans only so shorter span lengths only and these wooden poles uh, generally will be used in the distribution purpose in rural areas in rural areas uh, generally these are very widely used okay and the main objections for these wooden poles if you observe so these wooden poles have the tendency to rot at right, below the ground level right so when you use uh, these uh, wooden poles and if you observe the wooden pole below the ground here sometimes they may be uh, rotting okay so they may rot so below the ground level and if you observe the life of the uh, these wooden poles it is very small so generally generally it may be from 20 to 25 years it will be there and if you observe the voltage level so voltage level so these uh, wooden poles cannot maintain uh, cannot support for higher voltage levels right so these cannot be used for the voltages uh, which is more than 20 kV, right? So more than 20 kV, if the voltage level is there, wooden poles cannot be used. And these wooden poles will have the less mechanical strength and requires the periodical inspection. Every time uh, one person has to go and we have, he has to ensure that that a pole must uh, be in working condition, right? So it will be having less mechanical strength. These are the certain drawbacks of the wooden poles. And because of that reason, we are going with the under poles, which are steel poles. Okay, you can see different types of steel, uh, steel poles, right, outside, like this, which are there in the figure here. So depending uh, depending upon uh, the structure of the pole, so they may uh, they may be having uh, they may be called with the different names. So rail pole, tubular pole, hedge beam pole, RS joint pole, like this. So these are the uh, different names uh, which are used for the steel poles depending upon the manufacturing structure okay so here if you observe the pole is looking like a, a rail track you can say so because of that reason only we are calling it as a rail pole so if you observe the second picture here uh, the pole is like a tubal tube so because of that reason it may be, uh, it may be calling as a tubular pole so depending upon the manufacturing structure they are again classified into uh, rail pole, tubular pole, hedge beam pole, and RA giant pole. Right? All these will come under the steel pole. Right? Because the material used here for manufacturing the poles is the steel. Okay? So, because of uh, this steel, these poles are having the greater mechanical strength when compared to the 
wooden poles okay so they have the greater mechanical strength and if you observe the life of the life of the towers so they have the longer life also okay and these steel poles are used for the longer spans wooden poles if you see wooden poles are used for only shorter spans so but these steel poles can be used for longer spans okay and uh, these steel poles are used in the distribution purpose so mainly in the cities in the cities uh, we are most widely use this type of steel poles okay and this type of uh, steel pole supports needs to be galvanized or they must be painted painted so because to prolong the life of the steel pole okay so this is about the steel pole then concrete poles you, you might have also have seen the outside so the concrete poles so the concrete used is the rcc concrete so because of that reason these poles are also called as the rcc poles right so these concrete poles also have the greater mechanical strength when compared to the wooden poles and they also have the longer life and uh, these uh, poles will support up to long distances right so permit for longer spans so uh, more than the steel poles and the maintenance if you see the little maintenance will be there for this type of uh, poles and they also have the good insulative properties okay so the if you have the main difficulty with the, uh, these concrete poles so they have very high weight okay and the transportation um, will be transportation will be very difficult and the transportation cost also will be more okay so this is the difficulty with uh, these type of uh, concrete poles so because of the, this reason uh, instead of manufacturing at uh, some other location and transporting uh, these type of concrete poles so generally they will manufacture at the site itself okay so the poles are often manufactured at the site itself in order to avoid the heavy transportation cost okay so this is about the concrete poles okay so poles if you see you have the wooden poles steel poles and then concrete poles right all these poles may be used for uh, for low voltage levels only right if the voltage level is more than 33 kv or 66 kv so then we cannot use a such type of poles okay so in such a case we employ the towers okay what are the different uh, types of towers we can employ for uh, transmission line system we will see here right steel towers are you can also call them as a transmission line towers or transmission towers right the transmission towers may be looking like this uh, which is shown here in the a uh, figure right so this is one type of or uh, a uh, steel steel tower so this is another type of steel tower right so these steel towers uh, are having very very high mechanical strength when compared to the poles okay they have the greater mechanical strength when compared to the poles and they also have the very very long life also and these can be withstand for most severe climatic conditions also okay so if there if there is a heavy rain heavy winds uh, then also these uh, steel poles can withstand and uh, they permit for very long longer spans the distance between any two towers if you observe uh, they it may be very long when compared to the poles so if you observe the main parts of a uh, transmission line tower right so you have the different uh, main parts which are cross arm so the cross arm is uh, highlighted here with the red okay all these are the cross arms for this cross arm only we will fix the conductor we fix the insulators okay and these cross arms are supported by the case right so the middle one so that middle one is uh, we call it as a case this case will support the cross arms here okay so then you also have one peak right so this is the uh, triangular one which you can call it as a peak right for this peak generally we will connect the uh, one conductor which is called the earth wire right so this earth wire will be connected to the ground at regular intervals and if there are any lightning strokes right first uh, uh, this earth wire will capture that lightning strokes and will and will carry the current produced by the lightning stroke to the ground and uh, they will protect the transmission line 
tower. Okay. Then you have the tower body here. So this tower body will uh, support the entire structure of the tower. Right. So these are the main parts of your transmission and tower. So if you observe the different types of towers, right? There are different types of uh, towers are there. So depending upon the angle of deviation, right? So if the angle is, angle of deviation is zero to two degrees, so angle of deviation here in the sense, if you observe the trans uh, transmission and tower structures, if they are on the same line, the angle of uh, deviation is zero degrees. Okay. So if the if there is certain delay or series so instead of placing the second tower here in, uh, instead of here so then there will be some angle of deviation is there between this tower and this tower with respect to this horizontal one okay so de uh, depending upon the angle of deviation the towers are classified into a type tower so which is the uh, angle of deviation is 0 to 2 degrees then you have the b type tower the angle of deviation is from 2 to 15 degrees there is a c type tower so which is uh, where the angle of deviation is 15 to 30 degrees and there is also a d type tower which is uh, where the angle of uh, deviation is 30 to 60 degrees right depending upon the angle of deviation uh, the transmission line towers are classified into mainly four types a type b type and uh, c type and d type right so then uh, as per the force applied by the conductor uh, on the cross arm so the transmission line towers can be again classified into uh, different types so which are the tangent suspension type tower so this tangent suspension tower uh, will be of generally a type of tower so the angle of deviation is 0 to 2 degrees and you also have the angle towers or tension towers and these angle towers and tension towers sometimes also called as a uh, section towers other types b c d b c d types of towers will come under the this category and you also have the other types of transmission and uh, towers so which are suspension towers tension towers or angle towers or transposition towers okay so here I have shown one diagram right so these are the location of towers okay so now if uh, if the path of transmission line system is in the same line like this if it is in the same line so now here and here you can use the towers which are having which are of suspension type right so suspension type of towers will be looking like this okay so where the insulators if you observe so the insulators what we are using here is the suspension type of insulators okay so now if there exists some angle of deviation here so in such a case the towers at this place and at this place so you have to use the tension towers why because they have to maintain more stress at the tower right so in such a case you have to use the tension or angle type towers so the tension and angle type towers will be looking like this where you can use the insulators as a strain insulators okay so and you also have the under type of tower which is called the transposition towers right uh, in a three phase line system or uh, to maintain the reactance and capacitance of the, or inductance or capacitance of the transmission line system we use the transposition they will be transposed at the regular intervals like this okay so this transposition can be done at a particular location at a tower so that type of tower which is used for transposition is called the transposition tower okay so these are the uh, different types of towers and depending upon the number of circuits uh, which are used in the transmission line system again the towers may be classified into single circuit tower double circuit tower or multi circuit tower right this is the single circuit tower where only one single circuit one circuit in the sense it will be having three phases okay so one set of three phases is there it is a single circuit or uh, transmission line tower if there are two sets like this here so if, they, if there is a two types of uh, uh, sorry two sets of uh, circuits or uh, three phase circuits then it is a double circuit transmission okay so here also uh, this type of also single circuit uh, here it is a double circuit tower okay so the uh, the final one is that uh, stay type stay set type. okay so stay set here is that this one so for this pole you have one 
while like this. So one where you can observe here, uh, which is buried in the ground. Okay, so this is called the stay set. And the purpose of uh, this stay uh, stay stay set uh, is that it will support the pole here. Okay, and these stay sets uh, are used in the uh, distribution line system. Okay. And the purpose to use the stay set in the distribution line is to balance the forces of the line in different directions. Okay, so in all the directions, if you see here, the it, there must be some balance. Balance of force will be there. That balance of forces will be done by these stay sets. Right. So the stay set will be having a stay while and stay insulator. Okay, and uh, these are uh, placed at your suitable locations. Uh, generally, uh, these uh, stay set may be placed at the first and at the last. Okay, so we are having one kilometer length of the canopy cell line. Initially, you may be having one stay set, and end also you may be having one stay set. Uh, at all poles, uh, which are set at uh, an at an angle, at every fifth pole, even if the poles are in spread. Okay, so suppose if there is certain angle is there, so instead of one straight line, if there exists certain angle of deviation, in such a case also you have to use uh, these stay sets, right? So even if the uh, if they are they are in straight line, after five poles, after every five poles, you have to use one stay set. Okay, so this is about the different types of overhead line insulators and different types of uh, towers uh, which are used in the transmission line system. Thank you very much. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.